Welcome to another free tutorial. I am using my Prismacolors just like always on my free tutorials for beginners. I am also using the, the Strathmore Bristol Smooth for paper and I have my little hand pencil sharpener and I have my coffee and I'm ready to get started. You will find all of the resources that you need like the picture, you'll find a colored picture, you'll find a black and white picture and you will also find um, links to my transfer video if you don't know how to transfer your your lines to get all these nice lines on here to match up with your picture and you can pick which one you like the best on how to transfer and also you will find links to my patreon if you are interested in more in-depth teaching and bigger tutorials it is there so let's get started so this picture took me roughly about three hours to create. Um, I'm not big on drawing candy, but I will say that I did learn some uh, through this. I prefer to draw animals, but this was definitely like a game changer for me. It took me a while to get into it. It took me a while to get into the artist mode to really focus. There is a lot of abstract shapes and a lot of abstract just feels about these gummy bears. It's not a real bad thing at all. It's really not, but um, it can get confusing. So in the description, like I said, you will find a list and it will have all of the colored pencils that I used in here. So the red gummy bear, which looks more like a badger in my opinion, and it doesn't really have a face, but we will call it the great value gummy bears because I don't think they look like bears at all. So I started out with my crimson red and then I was also using um, a lot of my crimson lake and then overlaying with some orange and kind of blending it around a little bit just to give it some lighter feeling and some more um, like light coming through it I guess. The gummy bears are like a clear, I mean if you've never had gummy bears before my goodness they're like a clear gummy like they stick to your teeth they're kind of um, I, don't, I don't really like gummy bears <laughs> but anyway they are pretty to look at if you if you like gummy bears but I used the reds and then I blended over top of them I found the red gummy bear to be a little bit easier to do than I did the white gummy bear um, the white gummy bear is a lot different has a lot of different colors but the reds just seem to blend really really well and I'm using the Prismacolor if you haven't looked at the list I'm using the Prismacolors um, and then I also am using the Strathmore like I said earlier uh, but those are pretty easy to find out in your local art store Hobby Lobby and I like to use them as well because they're a little bit easier on the pocketbook if you are just starting out then you're not breaking the bank just to draw something. Okay, so just moving along here, I just wanted to let you know that you don't want to press really hard. You want to add little layers and then if you feel like burnishing, if you feel like you have enough layers, then you can burnish with the peach or you can burnish with the Spanish orange or maybe even the beige a little bit on top of the red. I also used a little bit of the yellow ochre and some of the um, Tuscan red to give it that nice dark feel and the yellow ochre to kind of blend in the other reds together. And here you can kind of see how um, we get these little shapes and everything. You have to really look closely and discern the shapes which you should have the line art uh, in the description as well you should be able to see what I see whenever I'm drawing so you can download that and use that as your reference or you can also use it just uh, to trace and if you don't know how to get your picture onto the paper that you prefer you can use any kind of method of transfer so now I'm starting at the top, which is, he looks like a little badger now, so maybe a chipmunk? I don't know. Definitely doesn't look like a bear to me, and it especially does not look like a bear whenever, <laughs> whenever we finish it. It just kind of doesn't have a face. It's sort of weird. At least right here it looks like some kind of an animal, so. Um, but anyway, 
Then um, I also used a lot of the poppy red too. It, the poppy red is a nice in-between of like a crimson and an orange and it kind of gives it this nice mid-tone feel and it blends really well with those dark colors and it also just kind of ties it all together whenever you use it. So still I put on a light layer of the crimson red and went over it with some poppy and now I'm just moving around uh, getting some darker areas and allowing these colors to blend with each other but also you want to really look closely um, and this is where the colored pencil picker app comes into play if your phone shuts off constantly and you have a hard time finding the spot that you're at it has like a little bullseye almost um, a target point I guess if that's what you want to call it but I use that mostly to blow up my picture so that it stays where my eyes are supposed to be um, I hope that that makes sense if you've never used that app I would download it if you're a beginner and just um, really play around with it I mean it has the colored pencils that you can choose from to use and everything and it is really helpful um, and I've, I've said this before too that um, I mostly argue with it now it's it was a huge help to me and a lot of times it can be a help if I can't figure out a color or if I don't know now how to blend or how what to mix so it has been a really really good tool for me and for other people that I know and after I get now that I've got all this these colors on here but the color the colored pencil picker app also helps you determine shapes when you're close up to so when you're using these colors like this you can see real close to the shapes that you're seeing and try not to over exaggerate the shapes I know that that can also be a problem and I do that a lot of artists do that um, when I'm teaching my students at the high school they will see you know a curve and the curve is so overly exaggerated that everything else is kind of off on the picture so try to really really gauge your angles and all of your shapes and try to figure out you know if it looks too big or too small so and I didn't use any black inside of this this is a brown I was using dark brown to help darken some areas and then I was using some Tuscan red normally I wouldn't be afraid to use the black but I was afraid of it getting a little bit too muddy because of how much red and how much orange like pigment I had down so I didn't want to use the black so instead I used the dark brown which was a very nice addition and the Tuscan red too to darken it all up and here you just keep working um, the dark brown around and you keep just looking at the different shapes and later on I come back through with the gel pen if you don't have a gel pen um, you can use maybe an eraser I have a mono uh, it's called a mono eraser it has a very small tip on it. It's a Tombow Mono. And you can get these on Amazon. You might be able to find them at your local art store. But you can also use that to take away some of the pigment. Um, and you, if you also have made a mistake with the pigment and laying down too much color, uh, you can also use the taping method where you take like your regular scotch tape and you lay it down and you can use um, a pencil or you can use like a stylus or... Um, something to pull up that pigment um, the only caution I say is if you do it too much you can potentially rip your paper um, and also if you push too hard with a stylus or you push too hard with your pencil to try to get that pigment up you could potentially um, indent the paper where it doesn't and it doesn't want to draw or take any more of the pigment um, so we finished up the red gummy bear and I'm working on the background now the background I wasn't too picky with because it was all just like one color and I'm using um, the I believe okay I used the beige and then I used the um, goldenrod to darken that up and then I went back over with beige and I did it a couple times so I try to stay away from doing like lines and try to keep that rounded even oval sort of movement with my pencil just to make sure that I get a nice even 
uh, transfer of pigment all over everything. So, and a lot of times too, you can go back through uh, with the lighter color like beige and you can cross over those lines and kind of blend them as well. And it's usually not that big of a deal. Now, if you are having trouble with lines, you can also use mineral spirits or you can use um, rubbing alcohol. I've used rubbing alcohol to sort of paint all of those, you know, lines away. And all you do is you take a little bit on a brush and you use it just like like a paintbrush and you just you know circles and kind of push it all together if you use too much you can get an oily um, stain on your paper so try not to use a whole lot but if it bothers you that you're seeing lines or that you're seeing um, the specks of the paper the tooth then go ahead and try to use some of that now I would do it on a scrap piece of paper first just to make sure it's something that you want but you might also if you don't have enough pigment down it's not going to spread as nicely and you will get like an oily kind of slick kind of a stain so make sure you have enough pigment down so now I've started the white the white gummy bear gummy badger great value badger we'll call it the great value badger <laughs> Um, but I used a lot of creams. I used some beige. I used some canary yellow. There's even some lime peel in there. And I also used the metallic gold for the darker areas. Now I also have my, um, it's the, oh my, the French gray 20%. And I was using that as a mid-tone to kind of um, usher in these dark areas and sort of map out stuff. So I went in ahead and I colored white on the brightest parts of the picture and then I went through and then I darkened around it with the cream and then I went in with my French gray and then also with the the metallic gold. Now some of the colored pencil picker app wants you to use some light umber which I did use that towards the end but um, I didn't find it that I needed to necessarily right away and I wanted to almost get more of a brownish tone like a reddish brownish tone like the burnt ochre in it first before I started adding you know that other color so always um, question I guess <laughs> I always argue with that app. I mean, I love the app, but I do argue with it quite often, actually. So the trick with this white one, um, I went through and I was trying to erase a lot of the lines. Now I used like a chalk, it's like a general's chalk pencil and it was a like a brown or sienna color. And I used that to get my lines down. I did still use the tracing method but I used a different color because my paper is white and there's no way to see it if it's white chalk. Uh, so I did use the Sienna chalk pencil. Um, so now the trick with this is to get your values correct because this little guy, he's a clear white gummy badger, great value badger, and he is like super shiny he's got if you look real close you can see a lot of like the marks from the machinery you can see you know different textures and it can be difficult to portray that especially in a picture this small my picture is about a six by six square so um it might be seven by seven it's pretty small but i mean had it been bigger you'd be able to focus a little bit more on some of the details that were there like the shine and then also the lines where you can see where the machinery has touched it or where it has come out of the mold. So working our way up the face I just start mapping out some of the darker areas with my French Grey 20 and just working around then also filling out with the cream in between those dark layers. Now it's not gonna hurt to go over that French gray with the cream. It will just add a, a little bit more pigment and um, will be, you know, it'll be a good blending, a blending exercise. So I also started to add a little bit of the lime peel and I had a little pause there because I was sharpening my pencil and I got all kinds of 
you know, pencil shavings in my coffee, but I wasn't about to throw the coffee out because we don't throw away good coffee. So I had to pick it out and drink it anyway. So, and I'm happy I did. So, <laughs> so off to the golden, the metallic gold. This is a nice uh, value to place in here as part of the darker values like the shadows. So as you're moving through, I would suggest to put a light, light layer first to really map it out. Don't dig your paper. You don't want to really press hard. You're not burnishing. You just want to put a light layer. Make sure it's where it's, you know, where you want it placed and how you want it to look. And then you can darken it up. It's always easy to add layers. It can be very difficult to subtract the layers that you put on. And it won't go after you like take it off when you try to draw back on top of it. It's just not the same. So don't feel like you have to go in like really heavy handed to make it work. Like you really don't. So just light layers and, um, you know, keep it, keep it simple. And now I'm adding a lot of the light umber here and it really made a nice touch to um, that metallic gold. It really like made it brown and made it like brighten up quite a bit. I was surprised at that. Um, and then I go back through with some more burnt uh, ochre to give it more of a brownish feel. And then of course adding some sand here and there to blend out the white areas just to brighten it up just a little bit more. So after this, we're gonna start now with the, the wooden platform that they're on. I think they must be on a table. And the tricky part about that is there is some reflection on the table because the table is a little bit shiny. So you can see some of the red below it and you can see some of the white reflection as well. So I started out with the terracotta and then I used some cream to lighten it up and some beige. And then I also used my light umber and my dark brown. And I kind of just went with the wood grain and that's kind of just what I did. I kind of just went through with the wood grain. Now these, um, the shiny parts, um, I just based them out like the red. I used my uh, crimson red and I put you know, a layer of that down in with the wood. And that seemed to blend a lot better than the other side, which was a little bit more tricky because it's brighter, but you can still see the wood grain beneath. So I basically just put like some cream down, a little bit of some goldenrod to golden it up a little bit. And then I used the light umber to kind of tie in and add some of those darker values of the wood grain. Um, you can also add some of that uh, burnt ochre that also really helped a lot to not see the tooth of the paper. And I just went along and kept adding layers of these lines to create more of a wood look. Now I did use some black underneath. I have a real thin line under here, underneath the white one of black. It's super, super light. And then I also added some black inside of the wood grain. I didn't use a whole lot. I, I wasn't like digging the paper or anything, just a little bit. So now we're using the Arteza gel pen. It is a 1.0 and um, it's white. And I noticed too, this is a little bit of a thicker tip, but you can lay it on its side and get smaller dots. I hope you enjoyed this one. Message me if you need help.